Putin News Now, the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the repercussions of the Wagner uprising. Russian President Vladimir Putin did not doubt the support of Russian citizens during the brief Wagner mutiny, a Kremlin readout reported on Wednesday. As the dust settles, however, questions are being asked of Russia's military leaders. A report in the New York Times claimed that a Russian general had been informed of the uprising in advance, but the Kremlin has denied this. At the same time, Wagner boss Yevgeny Prigozhin was allegedly plotting the kidnapping of two high ranking military officials, as reported by the Wall Street Journal. Russian missiles hit the heart of the eastern city of Kramatorsk, killing at least 11 people. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has announced that the attack's coordinator has been apprehended by authorities. The Ukrainian military has reported that more than a hundred people have died since the Nova Kahovka Dam broke in Kherson earlier this month. Nikki Haley, a candidate for the Republican presidential nomination and a former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, has said that Russian President Vladimir Putin is on shaky ground after the Wagner Group's rebellion over the weekend. Putin is currently in a state of nervousness. The military leaders didn't warn him, he has to figure out who's with him and who isn't, and nobody stopped the Wagner group when they started marching toward Moscow, Haley said at a Wednesday event in Manchester, New Hampshire. So I think he's on shaky ground, the former governor of South Carolina said of the Russian leader. To paraphrase Winston Churchill, I wish the Allies would just really circle the wagons and finish this because Ukraine is making some great progress. As Haley put it when discussing the Wagner group, but what happens when you create a monster, and the monster comes back after you, Putin learned over the past few days. She went on to say that the Russian people have lost so many of their sons, so many of their husbands that Putin now realizes he's in trouble. Russian-appointed mayor of Donetsk claims Ukrainian shelling has killed two and injured seven. Josh Pennington of CNN The Russian-appointed mayor of Donetsk, Alexei Kulemzin, posted on Telegram on Wednesday that Ukrainian shelling had killed at least two people and injured seven others in the city's eastern neighborhoods. According to Kulemzin, several apartment buildings were destroyed, and five teenage girls were among the injured. According to the Joint Center for Command and Control of the DPR, the Ukrainian military fired 16 shells at Donetsk City between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. local time on Wednesday. The mayor's claims about the shelling by the Ukrainians have not been confirmed by CNN. After the Wagner uprising, the Kremlin is eager to restore Putin's authority. And now, for some supplementary information. Reporting by CNN After the Wagner Group rebellion over the weekend, the Kremlin has gone to great lengths to reassert President Vladimir Putin's authority, holding meetings and events to demonstrate the unity and solidarity of the state and the military under his leadership. According to video uploaded by the Kremlin, the Russian leader was greeted by enthusiastic supporters on the streets of Durban during his visit to the Dagestan region. According to a Kremlin summary, Putin said he did not doubt the support of Russian citizens during the brief mutiny. Here's some more background info you'll need to catch up. The international community has reacted to the Wagner Rebellion negatively. On Wednesday, U.S. Vice President Joe Biden and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz each said that Putin had been weakened by the uprising. President of Georgia Salome Zorabikvili told CNN concerns in Ukraine's neighboring state are growing as a result of Putin's inability to master the situation in Russia and on the battlefield. The Kremlin responds forcefully to an article in the New York Times. According to the New York Times, a Russian general was allegedly aware of Wagner boss Yevgeny Prigozhin's mutiny plans in advance. The Kremlin has dismissed this report as speculation and rumors. According to the New York Times, American officials are investigating whether or not former top Russian commander in Ukraine, General Sergei Surovikin, was involved in the planning of Prigozhin's armed rebellion. American aid for Warsaw on Wednesday, the Biden administration gave Poland the green light to purchase a $15 billion integrated air and missile defense battle command system. On Wednesday, the U.S. State Department informed Congress that the sale was being considered. 
Ukrainian officials have reported 11 deaths as a result of Tuesday's Russian missile attack on Kramatorsk's downtown area. According to a statement released by Colombia's High Commissioner for Peace, three people were injured in the attack. Writer Hector Abad, journalist Catalina Gomez, and former High Commissioner for Peace Sergio Jaramillo. The Ukrainian security service claimed that it had arrested a man who had scouted the pizzeria and forwarded a video of the location to the Russian armed forces in advance of the attack. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine has reported that more than 100 people have died as a result of the breaching of the Nova Kahovka Dam in Kherson earlier this month. According to the latest information, over 60 bodies were discovered on Saturday and Sunday. Death toll from Belgorod. According to Peskov Governor Mikhail Vadernikov, at least 14 servicemen from the Peskov region were killed in an incursion in the Belgorod region at the beginning of June. Both sides of the border have been firing at each other, and insurgents from Ukraine claiming to be anti-Putin Russian partisans have been making incursions into the area. According to Zelensky, a coordinator in the Kramatorsk attack has been detained by police. Article by CNN's Maria Knight police have arrested the alleged coordinator of Tuesday's deadly attack in Kramatorsk, according to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Today, the security service of Ukraine together with the police special forces detained the person who coordinated this terrorist attack, Zelensky said in his Wednesday night address. The Ukrainian president has stated that the detained individual is facing treason charges and could receive a life sentence if convicted. Zelensky referred to those responsible for the attack in Kramatorsk as betrayers of humanity. As Zelensky put it, everyone who helps Russian terrorists destroy life deserves the maximum punishment, and he was not referring to just some collaborators. The facts about them are crystal clear. These individuals lack any sense of humanity. The entire global community must punish anyone who does not know, one cannot be an accomplice of a terrorist state. Zelensky did not specify the nationality of the alleged coordinator. According to new information released on Wednesday by the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, more than 100 people have died as a result of the breach of the Nova Kahovka Dam in Kherson earlier this month. According to the latest information, over 60 bodies were discovered on Saturday and Sunday. Both Ukrainian and Russian officials have given updates on the death toll from the dam collapse with CNN previously reporting that 45 people had lost their lives. To set the stage, one of the worst industrial and ecological disasters to hit Europe in recent decades is the breach of the Nova Kahovka Dam. The disaster has wiped out entire communities, flooded farmland, cut off electricity and water to tens of thousands of people, and wreaked havoc on the environment. It's still unclear whether the dam broke because it was intentionally attacked or because of natural wear and tear. Experts around the world are trying to piece together what happened based on limited visual evidence because the dam and hydroelectric power plant are under Russian control and therefore inaccessible to independent investigators. Several Western officials have placed the blame on Russia, either by saying that Moscow specifically targeted the dam or by saying that Russia is to blame for the disaster as the aggressor in the conflict with Ukraine. 